Welcome back to Houdini 101, the series where we go from our first time opening Houdini to having a full-blown product animation. My name is Jared, and in the last episode, we covered texturing inside of Redshift and assigning materials um, to our, our objects in Houdini. And in today's episode, we are going to cover camera animating. We're going to make a simple three-camera uh, kind of multicam animation. We're going to talk about switching cameras and go into some uh, nodes as far as having cameras follow certain paths. So let's go ahead and get into it. Now, animating cameras in Houdini itself is not that different from uh, other programs that you might have animated in before. Uh, we have our cameras here in the object network view that we have kind of set up from the previous episodes where we have this kind of onlooking shot with some good product lighting. And what we are going to be doing today is kind of just working in this timeline down here, working with some keyframes, changing the camera out so that we can have multiple camera angles going in one scene, and then maybe doing some more advanced uh, path following type stuff like I said in the intro. To start, let's learn about the timeline down here. The timeline opens by default down here in most Houdini scenes with 240 frames. We can change that by changing this to 40 here. By default, that is at 30 frames per second, and I would like to change our animation to 24. So to do that, we need to learn about this window up here. If we go to Windows, Global Animation Options, this is where we have a lot of the options for our animations. We can also change our frame range here, so if you want 300 frames, you can change that there. I'm gonna change my frames per second to 24, and then change this back to 240 like we had before. I'm gonna hit apply and close it. And now our scene is set up how we want for our animation. Let's go ahead and jump right into our first camera animations. So I'm gonna come up and if you aren't already, go ahead and jump into your first camera and lock your view to it so that we can go ahead and make some adjustments while we're looking at it. At the start of this shot, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so that I'm a little farther away from this model. And then to set a keyframe, what we're gonna to need to do is come over to the property that we want to animate. And you can right click the property itself and go down to keyframes and click set keyframe. Additionally, you can see from over here that the shortcut to do this is to alt click on whatever parameter it is that you wanna have changed. So I'm going to hit, uh, I'm going to go ahead and click that there. I'm going to move forward to frame number 72, and I'm going to move my camera in, and then I'm going to come up here, and I'm holding Alt. I'm just going to click this button, and now we have our first camera animation through space here. Now you can see when I hit play there that this is playing through as fast as my computer can possibly compute it, which is not what we want. So to do that, like I said in the first episode, we need to hit this real-time toggle down here. And if I go back to the beginning now and hit play, you can see that my camera just goes through this motion very smoothly, slowly and smooth. Now, at the moment, as you can see, we kind of ramp into this animation and it hits its full speed somewhere around the middle. I don't want this. I want my animation to be linear so that I just have one constant flow of motion in my scene. To change this, we're gonna have to edit what's called the F curves. And if you're experienced in animating, you know what this is. But in Houdini, to edit F curves, we're gonna come up to Windows, Animation Editor, and now you can see we have all these different curve options within the parameters that we're working in. I'm gonna select all of the different parameters that I have in CAM1 here, click in my animation editor, hit Control A to select all of these keyframes, and I'm just gonna hit this little button right here that says straight, which is gonna give us a linear progression through our animation. So if I hit this, and so now you can see that we have this one smooth camera animation from start to finish. There's no ramping in our scene. This is very simple, um, but if we come over to our Redshift render view here and I hit play, you can see that we have our mesh here and this is just frame one and then by the end, 
we we uh, we ramp in much closer on this model. So let's say for my next shot, I want to have kind of a more macro shot of some of the mesh elements in this scene. If I come over in my scene view and I lock myself to camera two, uh, this is going to be you know still having still having my lock camera slash light to view. Um, something like this is going to be. Uh, what I want to have. Maybe I come down here like this. I can move my camera into the first frame that I want to be at. And for this one, I want to orbit up and kind of around this. So there's going to be some rotation elements in our animation as well. So I'm going to come back to frame 72. Uh, move, my, move my second camera here into place. And then to add my initial keyframe, I'm just gonna come up here and like I said, option click, or you can right click keyframes, set keyframe, uh, right on this button here. Like I said, we also need some rotation uh, animation here. So what I'm gonna do is also option click or alt click on this rotation element here. And then I'm going to come 72 frames forward to frame 144. And now I'm going to kind of orbit up and around this little ear area here for just a second to show off some finer details. Hold Alt, click on both of these to set a new keyframe, and now I have this cool little orbiting animation here. Just like this, we have some spline ramping going on, so what we need to do is come into our window animation editor so that we can edit our F curves. Uh, come into cam to select all of your different elements here. I'm going to hit control A inside of this window. And I'm going to make these linear and get rid of the handles on them with this button up here. And then what we have in between our keyframes is a linear animation orbiting around our product. So you can see this is coming together really well, but if I scroll through these animations now, we've gone through 144 frames worth of animation, but I can only view one camera at a time. So how do we set up a multi-camera sequence in this project? To do this, we're gonna need to implement what's called a switcher, which is basically something that is used to switch out production elements, such as cameras and lights, uh, by using keyframes. And to do that, in our main object network here, where both of our cameras live, we just need to hit tab and add in a switcher. And I can drag this down right here. I can bring both my cameras up and around and plug both in here. And when both of these cameras are connected to my switcher, uh, you can see in here that by default, the switch camera starts at zero. So what I'm actually gonna do is rename this first camera that we have to cam zero, and I'm gonna rename this one to cam one so that that makes more sense to me in our uh, switch camera element here. And so basically, all we have to do now to make this switcher actually actively switch between these cameras is I'm gonna go ahead and alt click on switch camera and set a keyframe I'm going to come forward to frame 71. I'm going to reiterate that keyframe, so just Alt-click on there again. And then on frame 72, I need this to switch to camera 1. And so then now if I set my display flag on my switcher and I come up here and set my switcher to my active camera, if I come back to the beginning, I will have a linear animation from one shot to two shot and however many shots you want to add in here. So that's how to set up a simple multi-camera animation inside of Houdini. Uh, we're gonna go ahead now and add in a third camera with some constraints, but if you just wanna stick to simple camera animations and do all this, uh, all this good, you know, just general product animation type stuff, uh, that is what you needed to know for this episode. So now I'm going to add my third shot into my scene. So right uh, here around frame 143, I'm gonna hit tab and I'm gonna add a third camera into this scene. And this camera is automatically called cam two. I'm gonna switch to this camera. 
and zoom out. I uh, kind of have some some sort of different perspective here. And what I want this camera to do is no matter where I move it, I want it to look at my product here. And so there's a lot of different ways to do this in most other programs, or usually there's a very simple way to do it with constraints. And there is a similar kind of function in Houdini. What we have to do is actually jump inside of our camera. And what we need to do in here is uh, hit tab and add what is called a constraint network. And so basically in here, if you're coming from another software, you can kind of think of your constraint network as adding tags for different constraints and attributes that you would normally put on your camera. So something like a look at or a follow or a, uh, you know, a long path. Um, that's all gonna happen in a constraints network. So if I double click into my constraints network, you can see we have this get world space. And that's just, you know, our camera kind of determining our world space. And what we want to do is hit tab and type look, look at. And so we'll drop this in here. And uh, you can hover over these spheres here to see what exactly um, the parameters are. Basically what we need is an input, so that's gonna be our world space so that it knows you know, where it's working. And we need a look at, or a, an object essentially for this to look at. So what we can do is hit tab, and similar to an object merge node, we can bring in a, uh, if you just type object, you can uh, have constraints, uh, constraint to object, and your target is basically gonna be the output node for our geometry that we created earlier. So if I hit accept here, we can wire that into what we're supposed to look at and then set our, uh, our render tag. And so then if I unlock that camera and come up out of it, I can select it. I'll hit enter on my keyboard to get my handles. And you can see if I zoom out you can see that as I move this camera, it continues to look at our geometry that we created earlier. Additionally, what you can do if you want your camera to look at a specific position that's not necessarily your object itself, you can uh, come up into your object network. You can add an empty null, uh, and that by default will be in the center. I'm just gonna drag mine up so that it's kinda you know, center axis with my product here and you can come back into your cam2 constraints uh, and just change your constraint object to that null that we created. And similarly, if we go back up to our objects, uh, anywhere now that we move this, our camera looks at the null object that we created. So very useful tool. So now to go ahead and animate this camera, we will just do the same things that we did before. Uh, we will go into our cam2, which is our new object. Uh, I'm gonna start, go ahead and start farther out here. Oh, I did not lock my camera, so I'll come back in, cam2, and be sure that you lock your camera slash light to view. Uh, back this camera up, and you can see that our uh, view automatically snaps, and so that's very nice, just based on our positioning. And I think I just want this to go completely from one side of these to the other. And so I could normally do this by having it, uh, you know, go along a circular path, but I don't want to get into too many constraints in this video. We'll do some more in-depth camera stuff in a second. So here at frame 143, which is the frame before our camera switches, I'm going to hold Alt on my keyboard and keyframe my translation and rotation. And then halfway between here and the end, around frame 192, I'm going to come around to the front of my object. And move it, just move into position here hold option, keyframe there, and then I'm gonna go to the end of my animation, 
come around to this side, move into position there, and hold option to keyframe those. And now if I move through this, we just have this kind of orbiting animation around and things are looking really, really good here. Here I'm actually gonna leave the spline so that we can have some kind of easing between these cuts here. If this was linear, it would be pretty jarring, um, but for the sake of the tutorial, we're just gonna leave it pretty simple. Now we can wire cam two into our switcher, come back to frame 143, uh, select your switcher, hit uh, option left click on your switch camera there, go forward one frame to 144, and let's go to camera two, which is actually our third camera, kind of confusing, but. So now if I go to my switcher view, we come from frame one, sorry, we go from frame one, our push in shot, orbiting, and then kind of this little between shot. And then we loop. And that is basic camera animation in Houdini. Thank you for watching this episode of Houdini 101, the final part, which is going to be uh, sort of post-processing and editing this animation is going to uh, come immediately after this. I appreciate all the support on this series, and I will see you in the next episode. Thank you.